Hi, welcome to Aviation Careers podcast video. And in this podcast video, we'll discuss how to answer the tell me about a time question. And this is a new series that we're doing. It's the pilot interview course. Uh, this is number 12. One of the things we're doing a little bit differently is we're doing some videos that we're also putting out there in the podcast. So if you're listening to this right now on a podcast, go check us out on youtube.com slash expert aviator. You know, uh, before we begin, happy new year. Uh, you know, 2021 is here. This is one of our first pilot interview course uh, questions of the week in the new year. And uh, it's been a bit of a challenge this year. I, I will say that for us in our business and also uh, for those of you out there in, in the uh, in the world of aviation. Uh, we're going to start doing some more videos just like this to help you out and it's something we've decided to do and, and change course on. We're also going to do more video interviews where we're actually interviewing people on YouTube in person. We're going to still put those out in the podcast, but if you want to see the people we're interviewing every so often, we will have them out there on the YouTube channel. We're going to continue doing the content as far as the regular content on Aviation Careers podcast, uh, but we also want to have you folks be able to talk to us and and respond and also uh, get some better content because some of these things that we talk about, we really do need to do in a video. Uh, but the interviews will keep coming. We're still going to have this come out every week. I wanted to get your feedback from you to see what you like and if you like these shorter videos that we're putting out there. So uh, let's get on with the show here. Um, by the way, if you are out there looking at this on YouTube, give me a, a thumbs up or thumbs down. Let me know if you like or dislike these or just send me a comment. Uh, on the YouTube channel in the discussion down below. And all the stuff we talk about, by the way, if you're either on the podcast or in the video, is going to be down in the discussion, down the show notes, and uh, in the description below. So you don't have to take notes. Uh, just listen to what I have to say here. You know, some of the legacy airlines have changed and uh, <laughs> changed uh, quite a bit. Most of our business, as far as interviews, have been focused on the legacies, the American United, the Delta, and all those regional affiliates. Well, since they're not hiring, we've gone from, in February of last year, to uh, zero interview preps for that. Uh, but one thing that has changed is the increase in the positive in the cargo, in the charter, in business aviation. So we're gonna kind of shift our focus more towards those airlines and doing more interview prep for those airlines. And the videos that we do for the pilot interview course that we think would actually be helpful to those that are podcast listeners, we're going to put those out there in the podcast. But if you want to get all the interview questions, check it out, the pilot interview course on expertaviator.com. And if you need help getting ready for an interview, if you want just a little brush up, we do that through our career coaching, uh, aviationcareerspodcast.com. Uh, coaching and it's really simple it's uh, you know sign up one hour that's all you need to sign up for and we'll get you ready for the interview either for a simple interview or a complex interview check out your resume your cover letter etc anyway let's get started with the pilot interview course question of the week and uh, this is the how to answer a tell me about a time question you know some of people out there call this the TMAT question and TMAT comes from tell me about a time T M A A T tell me about a time. So if someone is getting ready for an interview, is, is asking you, have you prepared for your interview? Have you done some TMAT questions? You can actually answer that question with, yes, I have. Now that you understand what they're talking about. So when we're answering a tell me about a time question, there's some different methodologies out there. I use a simple one and it's called the SAR method. S-A-R, the SAR method. Situation, action, and result. So let's go over that methodology. Then we're going to go through a couple of examples of how to use that methodology. So the situation. First of all, describe the situation very clearly. What was a situation either you were involved with or maybe somebody you know was involved with? Preferably, we want a situation where you were involved with that situation. Say, uh, if I ask you, tell me about a time an engine blew up on you. Well, you've never had an engine blow up on you, but you might know someone that did have one. And you might want to describe that. And that might be a way of you answering this question. If they're okay with that, then go for it. So describe that situation, exactly what happened. Don't take too long, succinct, and get to the point. Number two, action. What action was taken? What action was taken by you? What action was taken by the person you're flying with? Air traffic control? Everybody involved in that situation. Because there's a lot of people. There's 
uh, airport rescue and firefighting. Uh, there's the pe- other people on the radio. What did you dial in? That type of thing. Third part, R, result. So what was the result of your actions from this situation? And in that result, tell them exactly what happened, okay? But don't stop there. So for instance, if you are involved in a plane accident or a plane crash, don't just stop with, well, the plane crashed and that's the end of the day. Not a good idea. Uh, Make sure you include what you may have learned. Uh, Tell them a, a little bit about the situation as far as, you know, you're exiting the aircraft. Tell them what you did right. And if you did something wrong, tell them what you did wrong and also tell them how you changed what you do based on the actions that you took and what actions you'll take in the future to actually help out with that same situation. So again, the result portion, um, make sure you also include anything else that's positive, Um, paint it in a very positive light. I wouldn't suggest, uh, if someone says, tell me about a time uh, that you uh, were in a plane crash and it it was your fault and you got fired, be very careful how you describe that, or you were at fault and you had a, a certificate action, because you really want to try to pay, paint this in a more of a positive light. I would suggest staying away from those negative uh, type of situations that can't be painted in a positive light at all. So be real careful of that one. So again, situation, action, and result. This is how you answer the tell me about a time question. SAR, situation, action, and result. So let's talk about a, a uh, let's use an example, okay? Let's go through just a couple of examples. I know a lot of you folks said that uh, these can be kind of short and it's best to have examples. So let's talk about a tell me about a time question. And I'm gonna answer this myself and what you did in that situation. So here goes. I'm the interviewer and I say, tell me about a time that you had an emergency. So I'm gonna describe uh, my most recent emergency. I talked about this on another podcast, Stuck My Gavcast. Uh, I had uh, smoke in the cockpit. So that was the emergency, okay? So I'm gonna describe that, and what had happened is we were on the downwind, and I was with another flight instructor that I was introducing to the plane I owned. I was kind of showing off my airplane, thinking, oh, this is cool, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad this person's gonna get to fly it. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the person says to me, you know, the, uh, I think that's smoke. And I was like, well, yeah, I guess it is smoke. And it took a little while to register that the smoke was actually in the aircraft, okay? So what happened? What was the action I took? We're on a downwind. Uh, basically, we landed the airplane. But the first action I took, and this is interesting, the first action I took is I grabbed my oxygen mask. Well, I'm in a Piper Cherokee and there's no oxygen mask there. So why did that happen? What was that from? That was from my training as an airline pilot to grab that oxygen mask when I see smoke. Didn't have one. The next thing I did is look for the fire extinguisher. No fire in the cabin. So then we decided to actually land the aircraft. We're close to the runway. So the next action we took is we got on the radio and said, hey, you know, we're two on board, smoke in the cockpit, we're landing, and we'll have a possible evacuation on the runway. Uh, So we continued with our emergency procedures. The smoke actually, as we pulled the power back, dissipated. Uh, We landed the aircraft, uh, and as we landed the aircraft, we didn't have to squawk 7700 in this case because we were on with tower and in the pattern. And, uh, you know, as we're landing, we see the fire trucks coming out. Uh, So we landed the aircraft, no smoke, we get off the runway, and the smoke starts again as I put the power forward. Ah, there's a clue. So we get off the runway, shut the engine down, evacuate the aircraft in a very, you know, orderly manner. Uh, And then before we landed, by the way, we opened the, the latch on the door. So there's an example of something that we did right. So we opened the latch on the door so we could jump out real quick. Turned everything off. And then uh, did our, you know, because we weren't on fire, we didn't see any smoke now, we slowly went around the aircraft. And uh, lo and behold, we saw something dripping from the nose of the aircraft. What was that? That was oil. So that's what was causing the smoke. So here I've just described my situation, and I described what that was. So here, there ends my description of the situation. Uh, So let's go back. We talked about the action that we took. We decided to land, and we can analyze this in many different ways. And we got off the runway, and we shut the engine down, and we realized that it was oil leaking. What was the result? This is interesting. So now this is where we come up with the answer, our result, our situation, action, result, and how things can actually change 
um, you know, in your situation, when you go back and reflect on it, I mean, this could be, this could be something that, uh, you know, you actually might find out is, uh, something you could have done differently as you reflect on it. So get your answer, you know, ready before this. So anyway, going to my situation, the result that I had is, um, you know, I, I realized that uh, during the walk around and during the pre-flight, I noticed that the re oil return line, uh, one of the connections was loose and it came loose. So what do I do differently? I actually touch each of those oil return lines. And of course, in the Cherokee, I was able to open up the cowling and look at those things. So the result is I look at those things more closely, but I also am cognizant of the fact that I need to look at everything else too and not forget about the other things and, and just concentrate on the one thing that got me that one time. Uh, luckily, there was no injuries. Uh, it was... Uh, and we were able to fly the airplane the next day. As a matter of fact, uh, just had to clean up the engine, and uh, and we became a bit of an air show because of all the sno smoke billowing billowing out of the aircraft. Uh, interesting in this situation, uh, situation, action, result. The result is I I might do my pre-flight a little bit differently. Uh, so that is part of the result. The other thing too is. Um, there could be a follow-up question, by the way, in the situation, action, results. So let's give it an, an example of that. Um, so um, I'm the interviewer now. You know, I noticed you said that um, you landed the aircraft. So who landed the aircraft? I said, well, I did. Well, you were the you were the person who was the pilot in command, and you had a person next to you. Also, you said a flight instructor. You know, in general, do you think it's better to have the captain be the pilot monitoring or the pilot flying? You know, what what do you feel? So that's a follow up question that can happen and tell me about a time. Uh, in that answer, by the way, a lot of airlines, that question I just asked, uh, you know, would it be better for the captain to be the pilot flying or pilot monitoring? Uh, in that situation, uh, it depends on what your training is, has been. A lot of people just answer, well, the captain should be the one that's monitoring and always hand it off to the pilot uh, that's actually uh, uh, in, in the right seat of the first officer, and you run the checklist, run the radios, et cetera. Uh, in this case, I took over control because this is a plane that I knew. Uh, this person was new to the aircraft, so I made that kind of command decision. Uh, so we have changed that, by the way, at many of the airlines. Uh, it's not always the captain that hands off control to the first officer uh, and says, okay, I have control or you have control, excuse me, and I'm going to run the checklist. So that's also a good discussion to have. Uh, and that's why they answer it as a follow-up question and tell me about a time. So that's one example of a tell me about a time question uh, is situation, action, result. Uh, they're going to do some follow-up questions like, uh, and this always happens, especially when you describe an emergency, you know, what happened to the airplane? What type of airplane was it? Uh, some of the <laughs> folks might think you're crazy flying a small airplane, uh, you know, because there's a lot of airline guys out there that never fly small airplanes. Uh, so you might find that in, in, your, uh, in your discussion there. Just make sure you don't have uh, something where it's a real, real negative uh, there are a few situations. It's kind of hard to find because you can always learn from your mistakes. Uh, I go back and I reanalyze every emergency situation I had, and uh, and I try to evaluate that and come up with some good answers as to what I could do better. Let's just go over um, one more uh, quick tell me about a time situation. This is more of uh, not so much in a CRM or a flying situation. It can be anybody answering this in a in an HR question like, tell me about a time you overcame a difficult situation using crew resource management. Uh, in this situation, I uh, sometimes will describe uh, a situation that maybe somebody else had or that I had. Uh, so the, the situation was such that I lost all pressurization because I had two uh, bleed valves fail and also we lost all anti-icing icing conditions. Uh, so using all my facilities and all the crew resource management skills that I actually have had, uh, you know, a pleasure of learning in the past, I was able to delegate to all the different people to the pilot monitoring. Hey, listen, uh, you're now the flying pilot. I'm going to get on the radio. I'm going to talk to the people in the back. I'm going to talk to the flight attendant. We're going to give them the time. Uh, you know, if there's an evacuation, what kind of signal we're going to have, how much, you know, uh, what, what we need to do during that evacuation, if there's going to be one, uh, the type of emergency it is, that type of thing. Uh, and so that, that's kind of a, the point where I, I use CRM to actually coordinate with a lot of different people. Uh, so that's kind of a, a difficult situation to have a dual bleed failure 
uh, pressurization failure in icing conditions. And I was able to bring everybody else into the situation. Most importantly, in that situation, I said to the people, listen, we're going to make it through this. Uh, the icing's not that bad. We're going to land at this airport. And we were able to do that. Uh, so that's kind of a, a difficult situation because it doesn't happen very often. We don't really ch chain for a dual engine or dual bleed failures or anything like that. Um, Anyway, so those are the kind of questions you're going to get. Uh, tell me about a time questions. We'll do some more of those. There's so many darn examples out there. But remember the situation I explained as far as a dual bleed failure, the action we took, the result we landed, and, and then you go on from there. Make it that simple. Well, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, do me a favor, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down or, and in the description, tell me if you like these. Uh, also, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, let me know if you want more of these. Uh, we're not gonna do all the, the pilot interview course questions of the week, obviously, because uh, that could be a whole podcast right there, and that's why we put it on the YouTube channel. But things like this, where it's it's more of a situational thing where I don't have to use as much video, although I highly recommend going out and checking out the video because you have some you know cool pictures, like pictures of the, the, the emergency I had. I actually have a picture of that on the YouTube channel, so if you want to go check that out, you can do that on the channel. Uh, but if you're interested uh, and you want to look into maybe getting ready for your course or maybe getting ready for your interview, whatever it may be at the airline, we can help you with our coaching. And if you want to sign up for anything we do, by the way, for just watching this YouTube video, uh, we're going to use uh, the, you can use the coupon code YouTube and you get a 10% discount. Uh, and don't forget under the recommended reading list that we have, we have all sorts of books and references to things, uh, you know, like remember I talk about a lot of times, uh, how you can find the domiciles, the pilot domiciles, and those websites. That's all under recommended reading. Uh, they're at the top, and then the books that I recommend for your career are at the bottom. Uh, so check those out there. And one other thing I want uh, to make you aware of is that these pilot interview course questions, uh, some are very specific and easy to answer. Some are kind of like this, tell me about a time questions. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a little bit different. And uh, I really enjoy bringing these to you. And I'd, I'd love for you to go out there and check them out. But most importantly, uh, when you're actually out there and you're moving forward in your career, the, the thing you need to do is after this video, after this podcast, you're going to probably stop and do maybe nothing. Uh, I highly recommend you moving forward and doing something immediately after this. Uh, and obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, it's easy to do. You can go on and actually click on some of the links I have. You can go out and, and start researching some of the things I talked about. If you're listening and you're on the road, do me a favor, stop first. And, uh, or maybe use your, your phone, you know, the old Hey Siri thing and tell the phone to do something and, and make a reminder to look up one of the websites we have. But the most important thing is that you don't stop. No matter what it is you do in life, you keep moving forward and you keep taking a step forward every single day. It could just be reading an article. It could just be like maybe just going out and tapping on read this later. Put it in your reading list and a to-do list. Or it could be buying a book. It could be actually getting ready and signing up for you know an interview course and or a coaching class or actually just sitting down and, and doing this type of thing in front of a video videotape yourself. You, I mean, a lot of these computers have video cameras that you don't have to buy a video camera. You can actually do that yourself. But the most important thing you can do for me is please do something today to move forward in your career and your life. Well, we'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there. Mm -hmm.